Good afternoon. Thanks, everyone, for coming out today as we introduce Keith Carter as the ninth full-time athletics director in Ole Miss history. Uh, order of speakers today, uh, Chancellor Glenn Boyce will lead us off. He will be followed by search committee chairman Mike Glenn, and then Keith will take the podium after him, and then at the end we will take questions from media. At this time, we'll take, turn it over to the chancellor. First, let me take and apologize for being late. The weather set in and really caused us some severe issues uh, getting back into the area, so I apologize to you for that. I'd like to welcome you here today, to everybody who's been watching, to all of our Ole Miss fans. This is a great day and an exciting day to introduce our new athletic director, Keith Carter. Athletics plays such an important role in the visibility and success of our universities, and we know that this was an important hire for us. Our search committee, which included alumni, faculty, and Ole Miss M Club members, did a tremendous job of evaluating a pool of experienced and highly capable candidates. We extend our appreciation to Mike Glenn, David DeLucci, Peggy Gillum Granderson, Jesse Mitchell, David Morris, Ron Rischleck, and Wesley Walls. I very much appreciate all the hard work and the time and the commitment and the effort they put into this. This group worked hard over the last few weeks to deliver a great result, and their driving focus was always what's in the best interest of Ole Miss. In particular, I want to recognize the search committee chair, Mike Glenn. Mike, I don't know how I can thank you enough for answering the call. It seems like every time your university needs you, we appreciate you so greatly. I'd also like to share a heartfelt thanks to Ole Miss football legend Archie Manning, who served in an advisory capacity to myself and the committee during this process. As always, Archie provided wise counsel and has been a steady source of guidance and support. Incredibly appreciative of Archie and the relationship that he and I have developed through this process. As we begin this search, I charge the committee with finding the right leader who possesses the integrity and character needed to lead Ole Miss athletics and our amazing student athletes. A leader with a strong and proven record of success, a leader with excellent management and interpersonal skills, and a leader who would excel as the public face of the university's athletic program. It was also important to find someone who upholds a strong commitment to academics and an understanding of the appropriate role for athletics in the overall university setting. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some of the finest student athletes in America. Their academic performance is absolutely amazing, program by program. So it was very important to me as chancellor that we also focus in that area because we have something special going on at this institution with our student athletes. We wanted a leader who wants to be at Ole Miss and believes all of our programs can compete and win at the highest levels. And I want to say that one more time. We wanted a leader who wants to be at Ole Miss and who believes all of our programs can compete and win at the highest levels. When I charged the committee, I gave them the full freedom and authority to find the best candidate for Ole Miss, and they conducted the search with a great degree of independence. We retained a national search firm, Collegiate Sports Associates, to assist the committee in moving quickly and identifying a strong candidate pool. The committee members have lived up to their charge and certainly to my expectations in bringing forward a recommended candidate. Now I'd like to turn the mic over to Mike Glenn to share more about the search process. Mike. Thanks, Chancellor, and it's a pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, I would like to reiterate my thanks to the committee. Uh, I didn't have anything to do with putting the committee together, uh, but once I found out who was on the committee, uh, I certainly took great pride in working with them Peggy is here today. Peggy, would you just stand and representing the rest of the committee? We had committee members from uh, North Carolina, from Mobile, Alabama, from Louisiana. I mean, these people are diverse and and uh, spread all over the all over the southeast. And so it wasn't easy to get everybody together at all times. But I will say we had 100% participation at every meeting. We had 100% participation in all interviews, and so I'm thankful for that. Uh, I also want to thank Archie. Uh, even though he was titled a, quote, consultant, uh, that's a bit misleading. Archie was in every meeting. He was in every interview. So from my point of view, he was a committee member just like everybody else, and, and he gave 
tremendous insight, and he has, as you might imagine, enormous contacts within, the, within collegiate athletics. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not thank Collegiate Sports Associates, Todd Turner. There is no way we could have conducted this search within the time frame that we did uh, and maintain confidentiality of the candidates, which is so critical in one of these processes uh, without, without Todd Turner and Collegiate Sports. As the Chancellor said, when he first called me, he said, I want to be really clear about what I'd like for you to do. I want you to find the best person to lead the athletic department at Ole Miss. Uh, Chancellor, I really appreciate the freedom that you gave us and the autonomy that you gave us to not only conduct the process but to design the process on the front end, uh, select a search firm, and then proceed with developing a deep pool of candidates. Uh, once the committee was announced on the 30th, we went to work immediately. We had our first meeting. Uh, we had uh, an in-depth discussion of three different search firms. We, we quickly honed in on a search firm. We talked about the process, and we talked about the importance of maintaining confidentiality. That was critical. Soon after that, Collegiate Sports came to campus and met with uh, all of our head coaches, either individually or in a group that were available that particular day, as well as administrative staff to get input in terms of the type of candidate we needed, the qualities of the individual, uh, and after that developed a criteria for us based upon the input that they had received and their experience in conducting many, many athletic uh, director searches. We were able to develop a very diverse pool of candidates. We had over 30 candidates, most of which were sitting Power 5 and Group of 5 ADs. Uh, CSA and I did a number of screening interviews to determine candidates fit and uh, interest in the job and the committee then got back together again and was able to narrow that list down to the individuals that we wanted to spend time with face to face. 100 percent participation in all interviews. The one exception was Wesley Wallace did miss the first interview. Uh, we gave him a little bit of latitude there. His daughter got married the night before so we thought that was a reasonable exception. But it was interesting when we were in the in the interview room, I started looking around the room and I see Peggy and all of her accomplishments in sports. I see David DeLucci, Major League Baseball player, legend at Ole Miss. I see David Morris, I see Wesley Walls, I see Archie, I see Jesse Mitchell. And then I look at Ron Rischlack and I think, think about myself and I go, which two are not like all the other? <laughs> so it was an honor for Ron and I to be a part of this process. And and I will tell you, there was no more group, you could not assemble a more passionate group of individuals uh, than was in that room that day to select our athletic director. When we started working with Collegiate Sports, I asked them to do two things for us. I said, first, you have to give us a deep and diverse pool of candidates. And secondarily, make sure that the decision we make is based upon the relative strengths and weaknesses of each individual candidate and is not influenced in any way by outside pressure, and they did that. And after we got through with our interviews, we had a good and healthy debate, and we came to the unanimous decision very quickly that, that Keith Carter was the man for the job. So with that, Chancellor, I'm going to turn it back over to you and let you introduce our new athletic director. This by far is the best part of my day, ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you. I have great optimism for where we're headed at Ole Miss. I want to welcome Keith as the next leader. I also want to welcome Keith's family because I also know that the commitment that you'll make in order for your dad to be successful here at the university. And so I appreciate each and every one of you and the family deeply, Keith. And we're never going to leave them behind, though, no matter how hard we work. So. Since his days at Ole Miss as an All-American basketball star, Keith has been a cherished and valued member of the Ole Miss family. Ten years ago, Keith was drawn back to Ole Miss. Since returning, he has served successfully in a number of executive roles, including as Chief Revenue Officer for the Athletics Department. And most recently, he has served as Interim Athletics Director, answering the call of his university to provide strong and steady leadership during a time of transition. He has succeeded consistently as a Rebel Athlete, Athletics Administrator, and fundraiser. He's been on the front lines representing our university and upholding the highest standards of what it means to be an Ole Miss Rebel. Keith has cut his teeth right here at this university. We coached Menard, trained him as a student athlete, 
And now he stands ready to lead our athletic department forward and continue an upward rise in his career and in bringing the trajectory of Ole Miss athletics into a new era. There's no better or more rewarding story than the one of nurturing and fostering a leader who then returns to serve the very institution that invested so much into that person. I think it's safe to say that we've gotten our return on investment from Keith Carter, and I think that will continue. He shares a deep passion for this university and is an Ole Miss Rebel through and through. His standing with Rebel fans everywhere will serve Ole Miss athletics and the university well, and I know all of Rebel Nation will rally behind him and support him in this role. Keith is highly qualified, well-respected among ADs, and he inherits the most passionate fans in all of college sports, in all of college sports. One of the most commonly asked questions on our campus is, are you ready? That question represents a proud rebel tradition, but it's not needed today because we know that Keith Carter is ready, prepared, and will lead us to new heights. Ladies and gentlemen, your new athletic director, Keith Carter. Thank you, uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, before I get started, obviously we had a little delay there, and uh, during the delay, my family was in the offensive room over here, so there's a good chance that part of the offensive game plan for the Mississippi State game has been either erased or is no longer there. So that may be ha that may be haze. So uh, sorry about that, Coach, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, no, I, I want to say thank you for being here today. Uh, you know, for me, I couldn't be more excited about this opportunity to stand before you, um, you know, and the opportunity to lead Ole Miss Athletics into the future. I want to thank Chancellor Boyce uh, for his support and confidence and for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I can't wait to work with him and see where we can take Ole Miss as we, as we push forward. I want to thank Mike and the rest of the committee uh, for listening to my vision for Ole Miss Athletics and believing that we can take Ole Miss Athletics uh, to a new level. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank my family. Um, my wife, Jill, who I met here at Ole Miss, and she's been beside me for 20 years now, uh, from Albuquerque to Bismarck to Italy, back to Oxford. It's been a fun journey, and uh, now we'll continue it as we, as we get into this new role. My children, Drew, Callie, and Hayes, uh, they've been rebels since birth. They really don't know anything else. And I look forward to watching them grow in Oxford and at many Ole Miss events as we move forward. I can promise you this, our family will be visible and we will be all in for Ole Miss Athletics. Uh, thank you to all my friends and family who have been so supportive over the years uh, to help me get to this point today. And uh, especially my mom and my dad, who I didn't know, were, <laughs> they told me they weren't going to be here, but they're here. So um, I love y'all. And, and my sister, you know, growing, back in per growing up back in Perryville, uh, they taught me lessons that have helped me mold and shape you know, the person that I am today. Uh, there are too many others to, to, to say all of them at this time, but as we all know, it takes a strong support team to help you be successful in any endeavor. And I've been blessed with such a good group of friends and relationships over the years. I want to say a very special thank you to our athletic staff. Um, we have a great athletic staff in Ole Miss Athletics. We really do. Um, it's been a hard time. It's been, it's been a challenging time over the, the interim period. And I think the uncertainty and the angst um, was certainly there, but our staff did an incredible job of, you know, of making sure that Ole Miss Athletics not only functioned, but functioned at a very, very high level. Um, so thanks to them and, and thanks to, to what they did during this time to, to pull together. Um, a special thanks to Lynette Johnson, who uh, was kind of my right hand throughout this process, and I look forward to, to working with her moving forward as well. Um, to the Ole Miss family. You know, so many relationships and friendships over the past 25 years since I arrived. Um, I didn't grow up in Mississippi, so I didn't know a ton about Ole Miss when I got here. But it didn't take me long to figure out that at Ole Miss, the things that are the most important and the things that um, are, are the best things about Ole Miss are simply the people of Ole Miss. Uh, I've been overwhelmed with the support 
uh, of so many people over the last couple of months and, and even this morning uh, after the, the announcement was made. And I promise I'll get back to every single person when I have time. Um, you know, for me, to, to continue to build strong relationships and build more uh, is, is what I'm all about. You know, I, I've been on the external side, and for me to build relationships and, and to continue those relationships is so important. I've learned from some of the best athletic directors in, in the country. One, one is here today, Pete Boone, who, uh, when I first got here, he was the AD. So thank you for being here today. Um, you know, obviously Ross Bjork, who gave me a, just an unbelievable opportunity to, to really be a part of every aspect of Ole Miss athletics over the past seven or eight years. Um, I appreciate, you know, his leadership during his time at Ole Miss and certainly his friendship. Uh, Danny White, the AD at Central Florida, and Alan Green, the AD at Auburn, were instrumental uh, in my early career in college athletics as we roamed the halls of the old UMAA Foundation back in 2009. And I have so, I've learned so much from them, and uh, I, I thank them for what they've done and, and built into me along the way. I believe the purpose of intercollegiate athletics is to provide student athletes with the opportunity to achieve academic success while competing at the highest level. Our role as administrators is to ensure that each student athlete has the resources necessary to accomplish both of those objectives. Instilling personal core values such as integrity, respect, balance, perseverance, trust, and humility are key components of a successful athletics department and ultimately the student athlete. The culture of the athletics department sets the tone for its success or failure, and I believe that it starts at the top with the athletics director. As the AD, I must inspire and motivate the athletic staff with visionary leadership that allows every member of the team to take ownership and feel that his or her role is important to the overall mission. At Ole Miss, we will continue to be ag aggressive and proactive to grow the Ole Miss brand and be leaders in all facets of our industry. We will absolutely support student athletes and coaches and put them in the best position to be successful. I know what it takes to win championships here at Ole Miss. From cutting down the net to uh, watching a Sugar Bowl win as an administrator, I understand the process and will do everything in my power for, to help us compete at the highest level. Ole Miss is a destination school, a flagship university that can attract the best student athletes in the country. And it's my job to provide the leadership, facilities, and resources necessary to win championships. As we've seen over the last year, our men's cross country team and our women's golf team have won SEC championships. And my expectation is for all of our programs to compete at that level. I cut my teeth in our industry and development, fundraising right here at Ole Miss. I don't plan on stopping. I will be knocking on your door. I'll be making a phone call to you to discuss how you can help Ole Miss athletics move forward. I'll be visible and transparent with donors, with fans, with media, and anyone else who wants to know anything about our department. We in athletics cannot do our jobs from behind our desk. So please know that we'll be out in front building relationships and being aggressive to spread the Ole Miss message. I couldn't be more excited for this incredible opportunity. I'm honored to be your athletics director and will work tirelessly to make sure that Ole Miss Athletics is something we can all be proud of. Thank you and go Rebels. Keith, what's going to be your first order of business? And uh, I know that there's a, a void now in the Ole Miss Foundation. Have you considered who you're going to, to take your place? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a couple of things that are kind of front of mind. Uh, certainly getting our staff back to full staff. Um, we've got a couple of positions that we've got to look at, but, you know, we've already been able to do some, some background stuff on that. I think we can, you can get to work on that pretty quickly. Um, you know, I think the other thing is just fundraising. You know, I think that there's, there's money on the sidelines right now. Um, people that have been in kind of a wait and see mode. So I'm going to, you know, go back to those people and, and continue to build those relationships and hopefully we can we can get some of those people to sign on the dotted line. For Chancellor Boyce. Chancellor, did the reaction to the search that produced you as Chancellor, did that give you pause before promoting from within? That did not give me any pause and I will tell you why because I put together a committee that I thought was exceptional. People who loved Ole Miss and people who were connected to the athletic world. 
And that process ran flawlessly. And as long as that process was running flawlessly, I knew that we would come up with the right candidate. And I do want everybody to know that uh, Keith had to fight through that process. Keith won that job through this process and that recommendation unanimously to me in my interview with Keith. And so I thought that process was critical. And Mike Glenn couldn't have been a better chairman to run that process. So. Keith, um, obviously you've been here for a good while. You've seen how this football program has progressed over the last five years or so. I'm just curious your impressions about the direction the program is headed and have you made up your mind about perhaps any decisions you might have to make in the next couple of weeks or so about personnel with the team? I think our football program is headed in a great direction. And I'm so excited about Coach Luke. He's our coach. And we couldn't be more excited about the opportunity we have next week in Starkville. We're excited about where recruiting is and excited about where the future is headed. So we're going to get behind Coach Luke, and we're going to try to get after the Bulldogs next week and, uh, and get to that fifth win. For Mr. Glenn, please. Uh, furthering that question, what was the committee's, uh, I guess, response to Keith's experience in working with coaches? Well, first of all, I think Keith's already demonstrated a pretty good track record with hiring coaches and, and uh, hiring Kermit Davis. His, his role in attracting Coach Davis to our university was instrumental, so that's, that's a pretty good start right there. Uh, secondarily, uh, an athletic director has to be able to attract talent, attract coaching talent and attract talent in the administrative staff. I think Keith's got the qualities that you look for in a leader. He demonstrated those in the interview. As a matter of fact, when we got through deliberating, Todd Turner pulled me aside and said, well, it's a good thing you hired him because I was going to have him placed within six months. So uh, there's an example of somebody that does this for a living, that, that hires ADs for a living as well as coaches, and saw the same things in Keith Carter that we did as a committee. So we went into this with a blank slate, pure and simple. Uh, we were going to hire the best candidate. That was our charge. Uh, I spoke to each committee member individually and told them that if they weren't comfortable with that mindset, then we needed to, to go in a different direction. But 100% of our committee took that charge that the chancellor gave us very seriously. And so uh, I'm absolutely confident we got the best candidate. Mr. Mike. Uh, you're becoming an old pro at this, Mike. Uh, <laughs> is uh, Chancellor Boyce going to put you on the payroll, you think? <laughs> no, you, you, you have to be relieved, though. Uh, this is three of those for you, and all been critical, and I know you feel good about this one. Well, we used essentially the same process uh, in every search. And, uh, again, you know, I, I actually talked with Chancellor uh, Boyce about the process that we used when, when Chancellor Jones was here, and, the autonomy that he gave the committees to do the work. And, and so we followed the same process. So that was the good news. We had a blueprint for what, what needed to be done. Now, anytime you hire a search firm, you want to learn from their experience and how they go about assembling a, a pool of candidates. And, and our role uh, was probably a bit more active. My role in this particular search was probably a bit more active uh, than it was before in terms of assembling candidates because we did a lot of screening interviews this time. And, uh, you know, it's, it, this, is a, this is a funny game. It's amazing how many people are willing to spend two hours with you on the phone talking about the opportunity, but they're not willing to interview. And so, uh, so you take that for what you, what you will. But, but we talked to a lot of people that have really good jobs, and, uh, but they were very excited about this. And that's one thing I think it's important to, to state. I know it's very easy for us to have a lot of our self-talk become more negative. I will tell you the way these candidates view our program is that they would have been coming in at exactly the right time. They felt that they were going to be coming into a program that was headed in the right direction that had programs like baseball, top ten in the country, men's basketball, NCAA tournament, football, which has had a great recruiting class, playing tons of freshmen, has got a bright future. So. You know, we may see it one way, but I can tell you the people that we were talking to were seeing it a totally different way, and it's a great opportunity. And to me, I took, I took a lot of solace in that, 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 that you know, we're, we, we were headed in the right direction. For Keith, 
Keith, I mean, you come here from Arkansas in like the mid 90s. Could you have ever seen yourself in this position now, I guess like two decades later? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Not, not in 1995. Um, I'll tell this story real quick. I told Kyle I wasn't going to tell it, but I'm going to tell it. So when I, when I got here in 1995, coming from Arkansas, um, I, didn't, I really didn't know anything about Ole Miss. And one night we were hanging out at a, somewhere, and I got into a conversation with, with, with this guy. And we had a conversation for about 10 or 15 minutes, and I went back over to my friends, and they said, wow, how was that conversation? And I said, it was, it was great. You know, it was an awesome guy. He was super nice, welcomed me to be on the basketball team. And they said, well, that's, that was Cooper Manning. I said, who's Cooper Manning? <laughs> and they said, that's Archie Manning's son. I said, who's Archie Manning? <laughs> and that's, that's the truth. I didn't know anything about Ole Miss when I got here. And um, as I said in, in my comments, what I learned very quickly is that the people of Oxford and the people of Ole Miss are what makes it very, very special. And so to now have an opportunity to kind of come full circle and having been a student athlete, you know, really not understanding how athletics worked as a student athlete. You know, I knew we got on a plane. I knew that we got a meal after the game. Um, but now knowing how all that works and being a, a part of that and, and helping our, you know, almost 400 student athletes, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor and it's something that I don't take lightly. I'm looking forward to it. for Chancellor Boyce. Did you guys have any, like, I guess, stipulations amongst the candidate pool with regards to, like, which direction you wanted to go with the football program throughout the process? We did not. Okay. No, we did not. Chancellor Boyce, did, alluding to what Mike said about the optimism of the, the candidates had about Ole Miss athletics, what, where is your optimist? optimism toward Ole Miss athletics at this point? Well, I have the same, the same optimism that Keith does, and I think he pointed out a few things. He pointed out some of our championship teams, but it, it goes even beyond that. You know, we're incredibly competitive uh, as an institution, and then when you start walking down through every single sport we have, there's so many positives to each and every sport. And I think some people sometimes don't get beyond some of our major sports. But for one second, I want to take us beyond some of the major sports and talk about all of our sports. And it's amazing what we're achieving in each one of those sports. And while they don't get the recognition sometimes, I want you to be aware, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the athletes, they work incredibly hard in every single sport. And they go through the same type of pain, the same type of efforts, and the same type of when they win, the excitement, and when they don't, the disappointment. So the overall program is also what I'm deeply ingrained with, and it's how I look at it. Every single student athlete that participates and wears Ole Miss, that's who I care about, and that's who we want to serve to the highest levels. And so when you look at it from that perspective, really, and I told Keith this last night, we spent a couple hours together last night talking to make sure that we were on the same page with each other about our expectations moving forward for the future. But when you look at it from that perspective, you can see why Mike had the conversations that he had with athletic directors about where the Ole Miss program was and that why they thought it was in a wonderful position. And I agree, it's in a wonderful position. Now, do we want to compete and do we want to be better? Yes. Do we want to win more championships? Oh, absolutely. And you won't find too many more competitive people than the person standing at the mic right here. And so probably the only person that I might find that's even more competitive might be the guy I just introduced standing behind me. But we're looking forward to making this work and uh, work at a very high level. Keith, you brought up facilities in your introduction. Do you have any specifics in mind of, of areas you might want to address when it comes to facilities? Yeah, you know, I think for us it's important that we finish out our Forward Together campaign. You know, that's a campaign that we started back in 2012 and, you know, something that we need to finish up. We've got about $17 million there to finish up, and, and I think we can do that in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, you know, we're, we're working now on a new track locker room, um, a little over $2 million there that will go in to, to help those 100 student athletes there. Um, you know, we've talked about our softball facility needing some, some help there, and that's something that's going to be a priority in, in the coming days. But, you know, I think we're going to have to get in. We don't have anything major, anything that's probably a 20 or 30 or, or above uh, you know, million type product right now, uh, project right now, but certainly we're going to get in and, and assess, and, and at some point we will kind of you know mobilize and, and potentially do another capital campaign, you know, as we move forward. 
Keith, was there anything you learned, particularly in the interim role, that kind of helped you feel more ready for the permanent challenge? You know, I, I think uh, having the opportunity to be interim was, was just so valuable. Um, you know, I, I've said my whole career that I wanted to be an AD, and then you hear from sitting ADs until you're in the chair, you really don't understand what it's all about. And I think I learned that on the first day, that that's absolutely true. Um, but what it did, it really solidified for me that I wanted to do this. Um, and not only did it solidify that I wanted to be an AD, but that I wanted to do it at Ole Miss. And, you know, I think that this place is so special. I think there's so many opportunities here. Um, but certainly being in the chair, making some of those decisions, uh, I think it's prepared me really well for now the permanent role. For Keith, when you got that interim role, a lot of those guys are kind of just placeholders for the next person. How realistic was it in your mind for you to be standing here again? Well, you know, I think for me and, and kind of what I said before, the way I was raised is that you just put your head down and you go to work and you do the best you can possi possibly do. Um, you know, I, I knew that because of the role that I had at Ole Miss that I had built relationships that were key relationships. Uh, you see a lot of athletics directors these days that are coming up through the world of development. And so I thought that was, was kind of a feather in my cap that could help me. But I knew we had to do good work in the interim period. And again, I, I credit the staff so much for, for working hard, pulling together, uh, doing great work. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like I had an opportunity, almost like a six-month interview. I actually thought it might be a little longer, you know, an interview process to, to kind of put some work on paper and, and, and build that resume. But it's been fun. Um, it's been a great opportunity. And to now get the opportunity to do it long term is, is very special. Keith, frankly, there's a residue of negativity left over from the NCAA's five-year, whatever you want to call it. I call it a colonoscopy. Um, it's a good word, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you do to, to boost ticket, get those ticket sales back and, and get that negativity wiped out? Well, I think every day we get away from some of that that you're talking about, it gets better. I really do. Time is healing it in some ways. Um, you know, I think for us at Ole Miss, we certainly have our own unique challenges and things that we've been through, such as, as, as that case. But I think if you look around the country, there's, there's, a, there's a downfall in, in ticket sales and, and attendance and, and those type of things. So we have to be kind of you know, cognizant of what's going on nationally and then obviously put our, our spin and our theme on kind of what our, what our issues are. So, you know, for us, we, we've got to be visible. You know, I think as the AD, you've got to be out in front of one person, in front of 10 people, in front of 100 people. And we've got to win people back. We've got to get them back here, you know. Um, you know, I think for us, I've been around for 25 years, and, you know, we've seen some of these highs and lows. And certainly when we're on the highs, we are pulling in the same direction. You know, we, we don't have the biggest donor base, the biggest fan base. So we need everyone. And so we've got to do a good job of being intentional and being visible and transparent with everyone and talk about our vision and talk about how we're going to improve on things and improve game experience and, and those type of things. But, um, you know, I think that's something that we'll, we'll, we have been working on and we'll continue to work on. Any more questions? All right, thanks everyone for coming out. Thank you. Today.